Hi, I'm Chris Montero here at the Innovations in Patient Care Awards at the EMS 10 2011 awardee, Stephanie Haley Andrews. Hello, how Hi, are you? Chris. Good, how are you? Uh, and so tell me what your background is. Uh, actually, I was a ER nurse at Children's Hospital for about 14 years and then I uh, had the opportunity to become initially the hospital's EMS coordinator, which was a part-time role, very reactive role. Um, and I took that opportunity as fast as I could because I wanted to do something new and I'd always had a really, I had a really good respect level for EMS and so that's kind of where we started the EMS Outreach and Education Program. And you're at the at Children's Hospital of Colorado? Yes. Correct. So you did something that was pretty amazing to me as far as a street medic and kind of that old grizzled guy. You went back and did something after you started the program. What did you do? Oh, that's right. So I knew that being an ER nurse for umpteen years really didn't mean anything. EMS is such a different animal that I went back to school and I got my EMT. And that was probably the best thing that I ever did. Um, it, was, it was an incredible experience and I learned so much and it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrote this really cool article about the ER nurse gets a clue, or RN gets a clue about EMS. Yeah, the MSEC, the MSEC editor, mm. he he named that. Oh, for he me. did. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> it was great, though. Yeah, it was. I just we were talking. I was talking to the president of MSEC, and he was asking me about my experience in EMT school, and I said it was mind blowing. I a had to study really hard, because EMS providers think differently. They are so resourceful. They act differently. They move differently than we do in you know our safe emergency departments and so um, it was an incredible experience and I gained even more respect for EMS because I realized very quickly how unsafe that job could be. Very true uh, and I tell you I have a lot of respect for you because you did that and um, a lot of people would say eh, you know I, I get it I'll do a ride along or two but no you you became immersed in the system. Yep. So tell me what why you were nominated what what was it unique about some of the things you're doing at Children's Hospital that uh, gave, had people want to nominate you? I believe, I first of all, the nomination was a total surprise. I didn't know. Uh, my colleagues nominated me, specifically my program co-director, Jason, and he has been an EMS for many, many years, and he came in to the program a couple years ago, and what he thought was so unique about the program and kind of innovative was um, we really focused on serving not only the city, the EMS in the city, but the entire region. Our hospital serves the entire region in the capacity of a level one trauma center. Um, but additionally, we, because we are a specialty care center for so many different specialties for kids, we serve kids from all over Colorado. And mm -hmm. so um, specifically, I thought it was important to get grant funding and to take PALS courses out to our underserved rural and volunteer EMS agencies. Um, I wanted to make sure that we were on the road, charging none of these agencies any money. The hospital was able to back this up 100% um, just to help them take better care of kids, um, which we felt is a great community investment, mm -hmm. as you know, um, because if you're helping, you know, if the medics would like to learn how to take better care of kids, you're ultimately serving the kids, you're serving that community. And so we've had some innovative um, different kinds of educational programs that we've taken out of the walls of the hospital. So speaking of innovation, tell me a little bit about the stroke alert that you're doing for children. And because I think that EMS providers go, ah, stroke in children, that's right. really not a big deal. But right. you guys are finding some different things. And tell me a little bit about uh, how that came about. Uh, so actually, Dr. Timothy Bernard is uh, our one of our um, stroke program co-directors and he's probably the most published pediatric stroke physician in the world and he works at Children's Hospital and we started talking about pediatric stroke um, I also did not know necessarily the incidence and while the incidence rate isn't terribly high we're wondering if the literature actually maybe not even be 100 percent correct so we're studying that as well um, on average maybe there's uh, 12 pediatric strokes in 100,000 or I, I'm not specific on those numbers so we'd have to double check on that. However, if you look at pediatric stroke, 
about 50% 50 50 of the time, the kids will have an underlying condition. And I have this theory, and of course it'll take a couple years to figure it out, but we've had so many pediatric strokes in the metro area because as a specialty center, you know, we have kids who move to Aurora and Denver from all over the region for their cancer care, for their mm. cardiac care, for all these things. Um, we've got the Ronald McDonald House in Aurora, you know, that, that houses some of these kids and their families. So we feel like the incidence rate might be a little bit higher in our area, but we can't say that for sure. But why Dr. Bernard came to me and we started working together so much with EMS was he knew that EMS was gonna make the biggest difference in the lives of these kids. Mm. Time is brain in kids too. And their treatment window, if you are going to use um, TPA or clot busting agents, is actually smaller than the adult world. And right now, TPA is, if it's used in kids, it's used off-label. So we oh. use it, mm -hmm. but nobody else will use that. You know, you know, pediatric centers will use it. So uh, Dr. Bernard came to me, and we started talking about how to get EMS involved. Because he's like, if anyone is going to diagnose these kids, it's gonna be EMS because they are the ones that have been doing it with adults and they've right. had fantastic rates of di accurately diagnosing these things in the field, getting these adults to the right hospital. So in July this year, tentatively, we're going to be one of 15 hospitals in the world that is doing a prospective TPA clinical trial. And we oh. are, it's like cutting edge research where after hopefully it'll only last about three or four years, we can then translate that knowledge get it published, and then hospitals all over the world can also treat pediatric stroke. The, the sad thing about pediatric stroke, and you can tell I'm passionate about it, is studies really have shown that the kids that have stroke, on average, they're diagnosed 24 hours after their symptoms, oh which is way beyond any kind of legitimate treatment window. And so, and because children have strokes, um, they have a whole lifetime of having right. that neurological, those problems and stuff. Versus end of life, like we normally right. would see that right. for adults. Now, do you, is, are the findings in the literature showing ischemic versus bleed, or? It's actually, I believe it's very similar to adult. Okay. It's, a, it's ischemic. Really? Mm hmm So, you've done all this, you've had a great career in um, emergency rooms, you've kind of pioneered some of this really great education for EMS providers in the field. What are you going to do next? That's a really good question, Chris. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Well, I mean, uh, you're an innovator. I mean, you, you think outside the box a lot. So, how have you thought about kind of the next career piece for you, or or how you how you take what you've done um, in Children's Hospital and start looking at other programs, or you know, think more again, more thinking outside the box. Uh, maybe there was the one thing that I did want to talk about was the the mobile sim lab mm -hmm. and taking that out to the field. That's relatively new or is that is that, how new is that? We received some grant funding from the state of Colorado um, through the EMS funding and the hospital matched it for us to buy pediatric simulation mannequins. And those have been on the road countless times in the past year mm -hmm. um, in all four quadrants of the state many, many times and frequently with EMS providers. Um, we've found that that has been very, very helpful. It's been a really dynamic learning process for them to be able to do some of these procedures and get that instant feedback. Um, and so we're actually talking about, okay, let's continue this. We've got great momentum. We know how to do this. We know how to set them up. We know what works. Let's study it. So mm -hmm. let's, let's pick maybe um, a, uh, an invasive procedure like intubation or something because the mannequins, the simulation mannequins can give us instant feedback whether or not it's right main stemmed, if it's in the wrong place, and uh, actually start doing some, some research. Very nice. Well, thank you for joining me and congratulations on your award. Uh, I know that personally as a Coloradoan and fellow EMS 10 person, I'm very pleased to see that somebody so deserving as you received that award. Thank you, Chris. It's so, an honor. So thank you very much. Thanks. So thank you for joining us here at the EMS 10 2011 Awards. I'm Chris Montero.